Hello everyone, and welcome to my bold and beautiful today channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Brooke is informed of the nature of their relationship by Hope and Carter. Steffi and Eric entered the CEO's office to discuss their disbelief regarding Carter's presentation. Ridge concurred that it was a surprise to him as well. Eric stated that it was irrelevant, as Carter's concept would never be implemented. Carter's ingenuity was acknowledged by all three, but they also believed that the plan would have an impact on the company. Ridge noted that it was too much and would change Forrester from being their family company to having to respond to shareholders and investors. Ridge pondered why Carter wanted them to take such an immediate risk. Ridge inquired as to why Carter had not previously addressed the matter, given that he had been engaged in its development for an extended period. Steffi said Carter often brought up growth, but this went beyond a proposal. Eric observed the products Carter recommended they carry and expressed his belief that Carter's concept would transform Forrester into a brand name rather than a fashion house. I don't want to do this, Eric clarified. They all concurred that it would be an unbelievable risk and require a substantial sum of money. Ridge particularly loathed the notion of someone else instructing them on how to be creative. Ridge added that Carter usually understood what he was doing and again wondered why he insisted they do it immediately. In a firm voice, Eric informed Steffi and Ridge that Forrester was a family business, not a conglomerate. Eric wanted to keep it that way, but noted that Steffi was more progressive. Steffi agreed that she was all for innovation and remarked that they were one of the biggest fashion houses. She added that House of Forrester didn't need bankers peering over their shoulders. Eric said Forrester's originals were works of art. We don't follow trends. We set them, Eric said. Ridge pointed out that Carter had never steered them astray. Steffi said she could generally rely on Carter's advice and felt they worked well together. Steffi noted that recently, something has felt out of sync. Eric thought Carter's vision was about pursuing profits, but it would take too much money, and Eric didn't want to bother about stocks and balloon rates. Love General Hospital, BNB, Days, or other soaps? Join the conversation on our SC forums. Click here to interact with fans and dive into discussions now. Steffi acknowledged that Carter said she had a personal dispute with Hope and that Steffi allowed it to interfere with her business decisions. Eric told Steffi he believed she had been very patient with Hope for the future. Steffi wondered if Hope had been betting in Carter's mind somehow. Ridge and Eric thought Steffi had a reason to be guarded after Hope crossed the line with Finn. Steffi said she didn't trust Hope around her husband or at Forrester and believed Hope might be manipulating Carter. Steffi pointed out that not that long ago, Carter wanted to cut HFTF, but now he's all about saving it and expanding the line. Eric said Steffi gave HFTF time to turn around, but there was a time limit. Ridge said it didn't matter what Carter said about it and concurred with Eric that it was their company and they knew what was best for Forrester. Across the hall, Brooke was reeling from walking in on Carter and Hope about to have sex on the desk of the designer's office. Carter apologized, but Hope said she wasn't contrite. My daughter and the company COO fooling around in the office? Brooke asked incredulously. Hope told Brooke that there was more to it than that. Brooke asked if Carter and Hope were involved and said it made sense as they have endorsed each other. Brooke warned that Steffi wasn't going to like it. Hope begged her mom not to tell anyone, particularly not Ridge. Brooke asked Carter if he told Katie but he said he had not. Brooke said she needed to know how serious matters were between Hope and Carter. They admitted they didn't know, but they were attracted and they were attempting to figure it out but wanted to do so privately. Carter explained that office romances attract gossip, and he didn't want that for Hope. Brooke softened as Carter said that Hope shouldn't have to disclose or justify her feelings. Brooke asked what his emotions were, so he listed off a bunch of reasons that he finds Hope inspirational. Hope insisted that it was more than beneficial to their business concepts. Carter and Hope told Brooke that they understood, supported, and desired the best for each other. Hope added that she and Carter wanted the Forrester vs. Logan conflict to end and didn't think it would harm anyone if they had a little fun along the way. 
Brooke said she wasn't there to arrest anyone and acknowledged they were consenting adults. Brooke told Carter to be honest with her and level if he and Katie were nothing more than friends. Carter said they tried, but it was over. Brooke noted that Carter was Ridge's closest friend and a top-level executive. Carter asserted he wasn't Hope's boss, that only Ridge and Steffi were. Hope noted it was unfortunate that Carter wasn't in command of her line. Brooke concurred that the Logans have felt undervalued for a long time at Forrester. Hope told her mom she wanted to take her time with Carter and see where it led. Brooke thought that sounded healthier than how she went after Finn. Hope confessed that Carter knew all about that mess. Carter said he knew what falling for the incorrect person was like. Steffi interjected and asked why the three of them were huddled up. They all looked panicked, and Carter said it was about business. Steffi said if it was about business, she could be told what was going on. As Carter and Hope are caught in the act, Lawrence St. Victor teases potential aftershocks galore. This week on The Bold and the Beautiful, Carter and Hope may come to regret not having locked the door of the design office before getting both heated and heavy. As you saw in Friday's episode, recapped here, Brooke walked in on the couple on the verge of doing something that most certainly wasn't crunching numbers. On one hand, getting busted by Hope's mom may not be a huge deal. Ridge loves Carter, Brooke respects him, and they both love Hope, Lawrence St. Victor, reminds Soaps.com. On the other hand, getting busted, period, is a huge deal. Because of Hope's conflict with Steffi and Carter's support of Hope, if it's known that he's with her, his credibility will be questioned. Steffi is already like, why is he all of a sudden so supportive, he adds. So no matter how much logic Carter would bring to the equation, if Steffi found out that he and Hope were together, his fear is that oh everything I say is gonna fall on deaf ears now for sure. More, so Popper bids adieu. It would make sense for Carter and Hope to vow Brooke to secrecy, and not just for the sake of Hope for the future. That's a part of it, but after what Hope went through with Finn, and Thomas leaving the way he did, they wouldn't want to be the stuff of gossip, St. Victor suggests. They wouldn't want people to look at them and be like, oh, how long is that gonna last? Nobody wants to deal with those types of dynamics so early on in their relationship. Eventually, no matter how tightly Brooke may zip her lips, Steffi is bound to catch on to the affair that's going on right under her nose. And that promises to be a disaster for Cope. Since Carter is a defender of hope for the future, St. Victor theorizes, Steffi could use that conflict of interest to fight against his intentions not only for the line but for the house of Forrester. Steffi suspects hope manipulating Carter, catches duo with Brooke. The bold and the beautiful reveals that Brooke Logan staggered at the sight of Hope Logan fooling around with the COO, but Hope insisted she wasn't just fooling around with Carter Walton. As they explained, Carter placed his shirt back on while Hope buttoned back up as well. Although Brooke was worried this was some type of fling or rebound, Hope and Carter insisted they cared about each other and had a mutual attraction. However, Carter and Hope were giving it time to see where things went between them. That's why Hope asked if Brooke could kindly promise she wouldn't say anything. Hope was adamant that Steffi Forrester and the rest of the Foresters couldn't know about this, especially not Ridge Forrester. Brooke acknowledged that she wasn't there to arrest anybody since they were consenting adults, but she did have some concerns. After Brooke inquired about Katie Logan, Heather Tom, Carter assured her that they were just friends, and maybe that's all they ever really were. Carter also pointed out that he wasn't Hope's supervisor and that he appreciated what she brought to the company along with his life. Brooke didn't want any broken hearts or hurt feelings, but she seemed willing to keep her tongue shut. In the CEO office, Eric Forrester made it plain that he didn't want to risk bankruptcy with all Carter's expansion plans. The Forrester legacy was too essential to take that gamble in Eric's eyes. Steffi was hesitant about giving up too much control if they brought on investors, so she had concerns as well. Although Ridge seemed to appreciate Carter's vision, he also had some worries and didn't get why Carter's was presenting this proposal now. Steffi ultimately wondered if Hope was getting in Carter's mind somehow. After Steffi insisted she didn't trust Hope across the board, she said she was starting to believe Hope was manipulating Carter. It wasn't that long ago that Carter concurred with Steffi about hope for the future, but now he wanted to save it and was pushing all this growth. 
Ridge suggested business was business, so Carter's opinion wouldn't matter if Hope's line couldn't get the figures up. Eric also declared that this was their enterprise, so they knew what was best for Forrester Creations. Next on Monday's BNB episode, Steffi walked in the design office, where she discovered Brooke with Carter and Hope. That immediately raised Steffi's suspicions, so she pondered if there was a reason the three of them were all huddled up like this. Carter said it was about business, so Steffi pushed for updates on what was going on. The bold and the beautiful spoilers Brooke, Hope and Carter will encounter more tight spots, so stick with us for predictions on any bad news that's still to come. Ivy's Mistake, FC Shakeup, Taylor's Heart Update The bold and the beautiful viewers can expect Ivy Forrester to ignite Steffi Forrester Finnegan's rage. In fact, Steffi is so enraged, she makes an executive decision that rocks Forrester creations to the core. Also, Taylor Hayes gives Ridge Forrester an update on her broken heart syndrome. Keep reading and let's discuss about what is coming up in the CBS soap opera. The Bold and the Beautiful Ivy Forrester's Mistake BNB spoilers for the week of October 28th reveal that Ivy has turned to Eric Forrester, John McCook, after getting shut down by Steffi. Eric said he would speak to Steffi and Ridge Forrester, Torsten K., about Ivy and Elector Forrester's jewelry line. Ivy went to Eric and told him that Steffi wouldn't even contemplate it. Eric seemed startled and promised he would take to the co-CEOS. In a preview footage, Ivy and Electra seem to be celebrating at Forrester Creations. Steffi isn't in the room, but Eric and Ridge are. Then, Eric talks about the two designers assisting build a legacy. BNB Forrester Creations Shake Up During the week of Ivy and Electra's victory will ignite Steffi's fury. It seems that Ivy goes over Steffi's head and turns directly to Ridge. Ivy might even be manipulative and claim Steffi left the final decision up to Ridge or Eric. It is teased that Steffi will be so angry that her next executive decision causes ripple effects throughout the corporation. The Bold and the Beautiful The Bold and the Beautiful reveal that Brooke Logan will be appalled by Hope Logan and Carter Walton, Lawrence St. Victor. Hope will presumably urge Brooke to keep quiet. However, that also means withholding it from Ridge. Speaking of Ridge, he gets an update on Taylor's broken heart syndrome. Will Taylor need more chakra straddle sessions? Back over with Brooke, she launches some Steffi-related allegations toward Ridge. So, it sounds like Brooke will side with Hope and Carter, that Steffi is allowing personal feelings affect business decisions. A preview excerpt also suggests that Steffi finally figures out why Carter is so gung-ho about Hope and HFTF. Carter will also speak with Deacon Sharp and a Halloween-attired Sheila Carter Sharp. Is Steffi going to extinguish Hope for the future once and for all? Talk about a murder scenario. The bold and the beautiful spoilers strongly imply that Steffi Forrester will do something this week that will alter the perception of Forrester creations and even how it operates from this point forward. Continue reading below for everything you need to know. The Bold and the Beautiful, is Steffi going to kill Hope for the future once and for all? This is not merely a Halloween episode, it's a complete nightmare. Or, at the very least, some individuals will experience nightmares. According to the Bold and the Beautiful spoilers, Steffi will make an executive decision that will cause some to question not only whether she should be CEO, but also whether she is making the appropriate decision. That is because she is going to upend everything in more ways than one. Furthermore, it will ignite another dispute between the Foresters and the Logan family. It has been reported that Steffi would terminate Carter for assisting Hope in reviving her line, Hope for the Future. That, or she might just sever the line altogether. After all, Hope for the Future has not generated any revenue for Forrester creations in several seasons so it would make commercial sense for Steffi to discontinue the line. If it is not profitable, it may as well shutter its doors for good. Steffi Forrester on the bold and the beautiful, is she being malevolent towards Hope Logan? However, others, such as Brooke Logan, will take this personally against her daughter. She'll presume Steffi's doing this to get back at her old nemesis, Hope. She might be misinformed, or she might be completely correct. It goes without saying that BNB aficionados will have to tune in to see what happens next.
The Bold and the Beautiful airs weekdays on CBS. Check the local listings for times. Let us know what you think by leaving a comment below. Also, check back here for the most recent news and spoilers on your beloved daytime TV shows, including General Hospital, Days of Our Lives, The Young and the Restless, and The Bold and the Beautiful. Steffi reveals her suspicions, and Brooke questions Hope and Carter. Brooke enters into Forrester's design office and witnesses Carter kneeling over Hope, who is on the desk. She exclaims, Oh, my God! Hope! Closing the door, she asks, You and Carter? Hope informs her mother that there is more to this than meets the eye. They are not simply playing around. Brooke asks, Are you two involved? She realizes this is why they have been supporting each other. Hope reminds her that no one, including Ridge, can know about this. More, B&B's weekly preview video. In the main office, Steffi, Ridge, and Eric talk about Carter's ambition for growth, which she believes came out of nowhere. Eric is elated by Carter's enthusiasm, but believes it will never happen. Ridge appreciates his initiative. Steffi and Eric concur but it is too much. They establish themselves as a family-owned business, with no shareholders or investment firms to account to. Eric claims Carter's plan would alter all of it. Ridge wonders why he wishes to take such a risk right now. What is Carter thinking? They are perplexed as to why Carter kept this a secret and only now revealed it to them. This is unfamiliar territory. Eric believes it would transform the company into a brand identity, no longer a fashion house. I don't want to do this, Ridge says, despite the fact that it would be quite profitable. They've attained the pinnacle of fashion houses. He and Eric debate taking on debt, and Steffi points out that they would have to give up control. Ridge believes Carter understands what he's doing. But why now? Why do it now? More, BNB star teases coming aftershocks. Steffi is unsure if Carter's idea is appropriate for them. Ridge says, or the right time for us. She believes in innovation, which is why they are so successful. They review their prior hazards. Steffi claims that this is the house of Forrester, and they don't need investment bankers gazing over their shoulders. Eric and Ridge concur. Eric claims that they create trends rather than imitating them. Steffi adores it. She is hesitant to take the risk at this juncture. Ridge agrees. Eric believes there is something going on here. Why the sudden urge for change? In the design office, Hope puts on her buttons, while Brooke asks Carter about her sibling, Katie. Hope's aunt. Carter claims they've been there for a while. Brooke queries if she is aware of this. Hope claims they do not want anyone to know. Brooke wonders why, because it's a flirtation or a rebound. Hope answers no, they are simply giving themselves time to see how things proceed. They adore seeing each other. Brooke squints, in secret. Carter explains that it is because of what is going on at work, with Hope's line. She asks her mother to agree not to divulge anything. More, life in photos. Heather Tom's firstborn, Zane. In the main office, Rich claims Carter has never led them astray before. Steffi says everything has been out of tune lately. Eric believes he wants to pursue profits, but they have never been about that. He wants this company to be around for his great-grandchildren, but he's afraid it won't be if they get into debt. Steffi has another issue. Carter had something to say about the Logans. He dislikes her stand on Hope's line. He believes she has a personal grievance that she is allowing to impact her business judgments. Eric believes she's been extremely patient with hope for the future. Steffi expressed gratitude to her grandfather. The conversation shifts to his unleashing Ivy and her jewelry line on Steffi. She believes he should have consulted them first before inviting Ivy to her office. Ridge shrugs and says it was just a notion. Steffi claims it's the scheduling of everything at once. It makes her question if Hope has gotten into Carter's mind. In the design office, Hope informs Brooke that if everyone contributes, they will be unable to take their time. Carter believes Hope should not have to defend her emotions or actions. Brooke asks, how about you, Carter? Carter claims Hope encouraged him to express his vision for Forrester. 
She inspires me. Carter brings out the best in me, Hope adds. She reminds her mother of how he defended her and her dynasty. Brooke thinks that's wonderful, but it's business. Hope argues that it is about respect. Carter and Hope share the same goals, notably the conclusion of the Forrester-Logan War. The current situation prevents this from occurring, and they are having some fun in the process. Carter regrets having to stroll in on it. Brooke claims they are both consenting adults, but I do have my concerns, and you're going to hear them. More, BNB Halloween Preview Ridge informs Steffi in the main office that she has every right to be on alert when it comes to hope. Eric concur. Steffi claims she kissed her spouse, but she does not trust her. She's starting to suspect she's manipulating Carter. This would explain why he is her ally. Ridge claims his devotion is to the corporation. Steffi reminds him that Carter and she decided not long ago to sever the line. Ridge claims it doesn't matter. She gave her considerable time to turn things around. If Hope does not come up with the statistics, they must make a change, it doesn't matter what Carter says. Eric concurs, exactly. This is our company. We know what is best for Forrester. More, Jacqueline McInnes would release his fashion display. In the design office, Brooke requests that Carter be wholly honest with her. Are you no longer involved with Katie? Carter says they are still friends. Brooke informs out that he is Ridge's closest buddy and a top executive at the company. Hope questions whether she means they shouldn't be engaged with each other because they work together. She reminds her that Carter isn't her supervisor. Brooke is pleased she has someone on her side. Them is a lot of stress around them, and she does not want that to influence them. Hope stated that they want to take their time with this and see how it proceeds. She informs her mother that Carter is aware of the situation with Finn. Carter knows what it's like to be attracted to the incorrect person. They appreciate Brooke's support and for keeping this to herself. Steffi enters and inquires as to if she is interfering with anything. Carter contends they were talking employment. Steffi says, oh, okay. If you were talking about business, you can tell me what's going on. In the world of high-stakes fashion, alliances, secrets, and passions can sometimes converge in unexpected ways. Forrester Creations, known as a pillar of innovation and family values, is now seeing those values tested as Hope and Carter's relationship ignites tension within the family. The scene opens with Steffi and Eric entering the CEO office, stunned by Carter's latest proposal. Ridge, equally taken aback, nods as Eric expresses his reservations, wondering aloud what could have driven Carter to push such a bold idea. The discussion intensifies when Eric, Ridge, and Steffi weigh the implications. Is Carter's shift in perspective solely about business, or is it influenced by something, or someone, else entirely? The Forrester family divided. The conversation shifts focus as Steffi questions Carter's motives. She recalls his recent unwavering support for Hope's line, Hope for the Future, HFTF, despite its financial instability. Ridge suggests that Carter's newfound enthusiasm for HFTF might be connected to Hope personally, igniting suspicion. Eric raises the stakes, pointing out that Carter's vision could reshape Forrester creations beyond recognition, transforming it from a family-driven fashion house into a corporate brand. As the executives dissect Carter's plan, Brooke is grappling with her own startling discovery. Moments ago, she had walked in on a private moment between Hope and Carter in the design office. This revelation shakes Brooke, who fears the potential repercussions. Brooke confronts Hope and Carter. With unsteady resolve, Brooke asks Hope and Carter to explain themselves. Hope, composed but earnest, insists that her feelings for Carter are genuine. She's drawn to his kindness, strength, and unwavering support for her career. Carter, for his part, respects Hope's ambition and values her vision for HFTF. They insist that their connection transcends mere attraction, but both admit they're still exploring what their relationship truly means. Brooke listens, torn between her protective instincts and the knowledge that Hope is an adult. Her concerns, however, remain, particularly as she recalls how Steffi and others have questioned Hope's intentions toward Carter. A business dispute or a personal agenda? 
Back in the CEO office, Steffi voices her suspicion that Hope may be influencing Carter's business decisions. Eric, aware of Steffi's long-standing tension with Hope, remains skeptical but notes the timing of Carter's proposal is unusual. Ridge attempts to moderate, reminding Steffi of Carter's loyalty to Forrester creations over the years, yet even he admits that Carter's passion for HFTF has recently seemed out of character. Eric clarifies that he values Forrester Creations as an art-driven family business and will not contemplate an expansion that risks diluting that vision.